And we are working for you asking about a growing problem in our community. Thousands of dollars in damage have been reported just this week alone because of metal thefts at homes and business businesses in Dayton. Well, tonight, Bershell Edme is digging deeper into exactly what police are doing to try to stop it. Katie, in the summer, Dayton police have seen their fair share of metal theft, whether it's for a quick 10 bucks or even thousands of dollars, as you mentioned. They're revamping efforts, and with some help from new legislation, thieves could soon face tougher barriers to selling their stolen metal. Scrapping is not a hobby. It's becoming an easy job for thieves looking for quick cash. It's a problem. It's a problem in our area. It's a problem all over the place. Um, I mean, you can drive down the road and just see people pushing enormous shopping carts full of pieces of scrap. Even with increased patrols for this type of theft, there are major roadblocks. Definitely metal theft sometimes is tied in with people who are just seeking a quick fix. Um, so they use that opportunity of getting this easy cash to feed their addictions, unfortunately. Drugs and vacant homes have fueled the problem. Police are working on both issues to minimize metal theft. Another tool is an online database. It allows scrapyards to record every sale. But state legislators have postponed making it mandatory for scrapyards. Officials say the info from the database will be crucial to fighting metal theft. We then recycle that information uh, to a level that sends it out to the, to the dealers directly so they can uh, have an alert regarding uh, particular metals that were stolen in their area and they can be looking for those at the scales. Authorities hope once scrapyards receive the alert, they will contact local law enforcement. There's also a plan to release a no buy list of suspects who police say are repeat metal thieves. While the online database is not yet mandatory, it is available now to scrapyards looking to participate. Officials say legislators may make the switch to an involuntary online system sometime late fall. Reporting live, Beershell Edmay, 2 News, working for you.